Welcome to another short lesson on backgammon. Today we're going to look at some common backgammon errors that players make over the board and what we can do to deal with them. So let's get started. This is a first position. White to play a 6-1. How would you play it and why would you make that decision? So here, the correct move by a long distance is to make the five point for white. Anything else is a huge blunder where you're giving away a lot of equity. But let's ask ourselves, why is the five point better to make than the bar point? Well, here we can see that as white, we have five checkers on our six. That point is begging to be unstacked and by making the five it enables us to do that. Also, the disadvantage of making the bar point is that we are not using our checkers efficiently. By playing one down from the mid and one off the eight we are stripping our eight point and we're not using those checkers on the six. We're also not creating an inner board point. Our five point is the best point on the board. And an inner board point is always better than an outer board point. The five point is best, then the four point, and the bar point comes in third. So if you make the bar point, we're opting to make the third best point when we could be making the first best point. What else is there to notice? We can see that green has not split the back checkers. So by making the five, we are effectively creating a priming structure to block green in there. This would make some of green's subsequent rolls a bit more awkward to play. The five point is also an asset. By making it ourselves as white, we prevent green from making an anchor later in the game. So for all the reasons mentioned, the five point is just much better than the bar point. And that's the reason why we should make it. Let's have a look at another position. So here, white to play 4-1. So here we can see that green has a five point board, home board. Green has one on the bar and also one on the ace point. So with 4-1, the two choices are to play safely, 11-6, or to live a bit more dangerously and hit green's blot on the ace point. So what do we do and why? So here, the correct decision is to make the hit on the ace point and put two on the bar for green. By doing this, we're only leaving 11 shots for green to return and hit us. In fact, we're only leaving one shot of double aces for green to bring both checkers back into play. So it's not as dangerous as it looks. Green here has a five point board. But the main reason why we should hit here, because what happens if we don't hit? If we don't make the hit, then green would secure that ace point with 11 rolls. That would put green into a holding game, an ace point holding game, where he would have around 10 to 12% game winning chances. Now we don't want green to have a foothold in the game. By hitting on the ace, we are giving ourselves 27 covering numbers with threes, fours and fives, if green misses. So the chance of covering is extremely high. And by doing that, the problem is solved. Our gammon rate also goes up a lot because green would then have two on the bar and we would have a closed board. So the small risk here of hitting on the ace and possibly being hit back is outweighed by the advantage of our gammon increase 
but also dealing with the problem of Green having a potential holding game and then getting a late shot later in the game. I'm sure if you've played enough backgammon, you'll realise the frustration of the ace point holding game, Green getting lucky and cubing you out. Now, you want to avoid that, and the way to avoid it is hitting now. Do not be afraid of the five point board. Incidentally, if Green's five point board was different and the five point was open instead of a six or the four point was open instead of a six, it would still be correct to hit loose. We can see there on the left that playing 11 to six is a error, 54 error. So half a blunder roughly. It's worth looking at a variation on all positions so we can make comparisons and then we can evaluate the difference. So if green were to have a closed board, a six point board when, where all the points were closed, then it would be a mistake to hit. Because in that instance, we can play the narrative forward and we can see what green could hit us and then green has good timing to roll sixes, escape our prime, and then win the game. So with a six point board, it's simply better to play quietly from 11 to six as white. A five point board, we hit on the ace, and a six point board, we don't hit on the ace. And in fact, it would be a big blunder to do so. Let's look at the next position. So here, white to play six two. What would you do and why would you do it? So the question really to ask yourself here is after hitting with a six, we hit the blot on a 10, we send that green checker back 10 pips in the race. What do we do with a two? Do we then play 10 to eight to safety the blot or do we play the two in a different way? So let's have a look. So here the correct move is to make the hit and then step up with the back checker from 24 to 22. And this would also be correct if green had the five point made. Now, why is that better than just playing safely from 16, 10, 10 to eight? Let's have a look. Here we can see the resulting position after the correct move on the top left and the incorrect move on the bottom right, which is a 67 error. You should be able to see that the bottom right is a very inflexible position. White has eight checkers on the five point, on the, sorry, five checkers on the eight point, he also has a checker stuck back on a 24. So some of the numbers immediately play badly, such as 6-1, for example. So in the correct move on the top left, our numbers play a lot better. Sixes escape, threes will help us make the 10 point. And on the whole, it's a much more flexible position where our roles kind of lead to more effective plays. We want to try to avoid an inflexible, rigid position where we are forcing ourselves into making awkward moves. The position on the right can deteriorate in a lot of ways. Like I said before, we can roll 6-1. We could also get stuck behind Green's prime. Whereas the flexible play, even though we are taking a small risk, the gain is better and our dice rolls work more in our favor. If we look at another position, considering flexibility. Now here, playing 3-2, we might just want to play 13-8. to eight. 
Now, the reason why we would make that play is because of things we might have heard, such as you want to keep three or more checkers on the eight point, you don't want to strip the midpoint, or you want to take checkers off a midpoint when it's stacked. But here, again, by playing 13 to 8, we are just creating an inflexible position. It's leaving us in a position where some of our roles are going to play badly in future plays. So here, by playing any other move, such as splitting the back checkers or bringing two down, immediately creates a more flexible position. We can see that 13-8 is actually the fourth move. So the three moves above that are all significantly better. And that's mainly because of greater flexibility. And one way to explore this is to put this position onto XG and then look at dice distribution to see which numbers play well after the move. So 13 to 8 here, it might look correct on first sight, but actually it's quite wrong because of the rigidity of the position. And finally, let's look at this one where white has a 4-6 to play. Now, what would you do here and why? So the best thing to do here is to take the risk and play two off the 18 point. Now, you might say that, well, you're leaving a direct shot of an ace there. But green only has a three point board. That means if we are hit as white, we have 27 rolls to enter back into the board. Also, we are ahead in the race by five pips, so that should determine our game plan to run. If we don't run now, you can ask yourself, well, what will happen? Well, what will happen is green will have a more developed position. Green will have a better home board and it will become more difficult for us to escape. Here, we don't like the idea of playing the second best move because we don't want to bury our checkers on the ace. So this determines that we run, we take the small risk, we pay now rather than later, and we hope to get away with it. If green misses, then we are in a racing game when we have the pip lead as white. If we again look at a variation here, if green had a four point board instead of a three point board, here it would be the wrong decision to make the running play. And that's simply because a four point board is much stronger than a three point board. With a three point board, white enters with 27 rolls and with a four point board, white enters with only 20 rolls. So seven fewer rolls is significant. That's almost a quarter of all rolls. So in this instance, it's better to play anything else really that puts the checkers in. Even though we don't like to put the checkers beyond the open point, eight, four, seven, one, taking the risk here is too much of a risk. Hit, getting hit would be devastating so in with a four point board we stay put and we hope for a double to come up and then escape in the preceding position we take the risk and here also the race is only one pip so we can wait there and we might be lucky with a shot when green brings those checkers in so again the game plan is slightly different here, we're playing more of a holding game by staying back. And previously, we're playing a racing game because of a small pip lead and the three-point home board for green. So I hope that's been helpful. If you like my content, then please subscribe or leave any comments. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.